So again, today we're going to be covering some of the additional features you get access to in SolidWorks Premium, particularly those related to simulation. So just to take a quick look at our agenda, we're going to be talking about SolidWorks Simulation, which is our stress analysis or FEA tool embedded in SolidWorks Premium. We'll be looking at SolidWorks Sustainability, which is a life cycle or kind of a ecological impact study we can do. And we'll also be looking at SOLIDWORKS Motion, which is a kinematics simulation. Then we'll have a question and answer session at the end here for any of those questions you might have had. So to get started with SOLIDWORKS Simulation, first of all, what is simulation? Well, when we say SOLIDWORKS Simulation, really it's a stress analysis, an FEA analysis tool embedded with right within SOLIDWORKS Premium. And it allows you to virtually prototype, essentially, virtually test different loadings, different design changes, make iterations to your designs, and kind of choose the best design out of the bunch if you want to, all without actually making a physical prototype. So you can predict stresses under a certain loading. You can predict displacements or deformation. You can see which design is stiffer. Uh, you can test different materials. There's a whole lot of things that you can do with SOLIDWORKS simulation. Um, since we are kind of talking about analysis tools today, I do like to pose the question of, well, why should you use our analysis tools? Why use the SOLIDWORKS analysis tools? One of the big reasons is just they're embedded in SOLIDWORKS, right? So if you're already using SOLIDWORKS CAD, it's one less step you need to go to, to like export the model out to some other software and then run the analysis in there. You're going to get a faster turnaround. So basically you can do those kind of what-if scenarios more quickly, right? Making design changes, running the simulation again. As you'll see, the simulation studies, whether it's for SOLIDWORKS simulation or motion or any of our other products, they all exist on the SOLIDWORKS files. So you can just go change the dimension, rerun the study without having to uh, do any import or export process. It's also very easy to use, basically one of the easiest to use simulation tools out there. Um, and then it's a, kind of a one-stop shop in terms of support. So we support the simulation tools as well as SOLIDWORKS, and we also offer things like consulting or mentoring. So we can do consulting projects with the simulation tools. We can do customized training with the simulation tools for you. Um, so basically, if you're already partnering with us for CAD, it's kind of a, just a convenient path for support there. All right, and just to kind of show the kind of the portfolio of simulation products we have, there's the SOLIDWORKS simulation, which is the FEA we're talking about, uh, motion simulation, which is the kinematics, like for linkages and mechanisms. And we're also going to look at SOLIDWORKS sustainability, kind of the ecological impact studies. Um, and then there's uh, some other add-ons as well. You can get SOLIDWORKS flow simulation as our CFD tool and SOLIDWORKS plastics for mold filling prediction. These are both separate products that can be added on. But these three I have here highlighted in red are what we're going over today, and those are ones included in SOLIDWORKS Premium. So starting off with SOLIDWORKS Simulation, uh, I want to look at this simple example, which is basically a, a steering bracket where a tie rod would connect on a car to the steering knuckle, as you can see here highlighted. And we just want to apply a force, restrain this part where it would actually be restrained with the bolts, and see what the resulting stresses are. And we want to maybe try to optimize the part a little bit um, to make sure it's not you know, hugely overbuilt and we're waste, right, wasting excess material, right? So this would be important for any high volume application or uh, race car application, something like that, where you want to keep the weight down. So I'm going to switch over to SOLIDWORKS here. And I have that part open. And the first thing to know about these tools, even though they come with SOLIDWORKS Premium, they're considered an add-in in SOLIDWORKS. So to make sure you're accessing the full version of simulation you get with SOLIDWORKS Premium, you want to go to your add-ins and click that SOLIDWORKS simulation button. Okay. We'll be doing the same thing for motion later on. Then that gives you an additional toolbar for simulation here. And I can choose to create a new study. Now we're going to talk about what these different types of studies are, because there are more advanced packages of simulation also. Uh, but again, with SOLIDWORKS Premium, you'll be getting this, this one study type called static. It's basically a linear static study. 
and that's by far the most common type of study that engineers and designers are typically interested in running. Um, so we're going to choose that static study type, click the check mark, and now I've created a blank simulation study on here. And basically your feature manager area here gets split into two in SOLIDWORKS. So you have your regular feature manager up top and a simulation design tree down below. And what I always tell people is just work your way top to bottom down through this tree to set up the definitions. So you can see here parts list. We have multiple parts in an assembly. We have um, some components that any materials defined in SOLIDWORKS will automatically carry over. Other components that don't have a material defined, you can just go in and apply a material from our material library. The nice thing about this, when you're in simulation, it highlights for you relevant material properties. So if you're inputting a material yourself, wondering what values you need, it will show for me right here that I need highlighted in red the elastic modulus, Poisson's ratio, mass density, yield strength. These are essentially the engineering properties of the material for this type of study. So you can also create your own custom materials and there's a pretty expansive library built in here. So I apply that material then now I have the check mark on the parts. So I can go down the list here. Um, connections would be how we define interactions between multiple components. So SOLIDWORKS simulation doesn't use your assembly mates. It uses what's called contact between different components and right now it's saying bond all these components together. So they'd basically be as if they were like welded or fused together. But we could change that to a sliding type contact. If you had other components that you wanted to um, represent, like this is bolted to another component, for instance, we have virtual connectors like virtual bolts. So I could just choose, you know, the, the mating edges of another component and basically create a little virtual bolt there that I could even preload it and take a look at what the preload does to the, to the part Right, as if that is a help or hurt situation. So there's um, all these virtual connectors, springs, pins, bolts, even some ways to represent welds that you'll, you'd have access to here as well. Um, but for this example, we're trying to keep it simple, it's going to remove that and um, just fix those areas. So that's the next section down here is called fixtures. And there's a whole slew of fixtures here as well. I can just completely fix something. I can have a hinge type fixture. Um, there's advanced fixtures where you can manually define certain ways that you want to restrain things or use symmetry to speed up your solution. But I'm just going to say maybe a fixed hinge. So that's just a, just a fixed kind of translation about those holes. And I'll choose those three holes where the bolts would be applied. And then on the back of this thing, I'll apply a different type of fixture, just go in, and the pictures here do a pretty good job, these little animations do a pretty good job showing you what that fixture is actually doing. Also, if you're not sure what fixtures you should be using, there's a fixture advisor that can suggest for you, basically ask you some questions and suggest. But I'll just choose the back face there for this roller slider, which basically means it won't allow that face to translate, and click OK. And those little green arrows that show up also do a pretty good job indicating what's going on with the fixtures. It shows you that face can't move that way and then these holes can't move the other direction. So this thing should be pretty well restrained. If we ever had a question, we could always include more components. This is a simple few piece assembly, but I've run simulations before with dozens or hundreds of components even. So um, we're showing a simple example here, but there are no, one of my favorite things about the simulation package that comes in SOLIDWORKS Premium is there's no hard limits in it. There's no artificial limit of you can only do 50 parts or 100 parts. Um, it's basically as much as you want to throw at it, right, at your computer. So we're down now to the step for applying loads. Come down here to loads and you can see forces, pressures, gravity load, temperature loads we can do. I'm just going to choose a force, apply it to this ball right here. And then I'll choose the direction I want that force to be in. I'll choose maybe just one of these edges and enter the magnitude, 6,000 newtons that we wanted. You can switch the units right here too if you want pounds instead. And click OK. So I have the force defined. I have the fixtures defined. That's really all I need to do. I could go ahead and just click the Run button now. 
that's perfectly fine. And uh, what would happen then if you just click run is SOLIDWORKS simulation would automatically mesh this study and then solve it. And meshing is just, that's the only kind of analysis type step that we need to do in FEA. Um, it's where we break it down into those finite elements. So if I want to see that in more detail, I can right click and say create the mesh and click the check mark and then we'll see it actually break this model down <coughs> into those finite elements. Okay, So we can refine that if we want to. We can put extra refinement in certain areas. I can adjust all kinds of settings about that if you want to get into that. But basically just know that out of the box it's going to do a pretty pretty good job choosing this mesh size for you. This is one of the great things about SOLIDWORKS simulation. It's able to look at your geometries and automatically generate a mesh that's suitable for you. And then you can refine it from there if you want to, if you want to locally refine different areas and things. Once I have all that set up, I just click Run. Okay, and it's going to solve. The study should solve in just a couple seconds. And then we're going to be presented with a bunch of different types of results. I'm going to get stress results, which is what I'm looking at here. I can click through to see displacement results. Okay, um, Basically, whatever parameters I'm interested in. And on any of these plots, I'll be able to do things like animate to see the general direction that things are deforming. Okay. I'll be able to quickly identify the peak stress, where that is. I can click on this little legend here and click the little annotation to show me where the peak stress value is on here. Um, they've done some really nice things. If you want to rescale these numbers, you can just enter and type values right into here to do that. Um, so they've really made the UI uh, pretty very simple to use to just show max and min annotations from this legend. You can even change the way the plot's displayed and everything right from that legend with the right click. Um, so there's a lot of different options available. We can also locally probe. So if I right click and probe, then I can get readings local to any particular location that I'm clicking on, right, right here. Or you can even probe along edges or things, but I want to click on a particular edge, and I can actually plot the stress along that edge. If I want to, I can actually see um, stress over distance. So there's a lot of advanced tools you can use for interpreting the results, and these type of graphs I create can be exported to Excel as well if you want to do your own plotting and things. We also look at the displacement and we'll see things like, you know, it looks like it's displacing a lot on the screen, but we're actually using what's called an exaggerated displacement. So SOLIDWORKS simulation does this by default to show me that, hey, it looks like uh, that's the general way it's deforming, right? Because in reality, with this particular load I have applied, the deformation is so small we probably wouldn't even see it. You can always turn that off though. You can come in here and say use the true scale deformation. And it would show you, you know, hardly any movement. If I if I control the deformed or non-deformed, you'd see, you can hardly see the difference. And it's actually 0.1 millimeter that it's displacing right now. Okay. So that's one of the assumptions of this linear static type of study we're making. It kind of has that small displacement assumption, like um, like you'd get doing a hand calculation for beam bending or something. So if you get into really large displacements, it'll actually warn you that you have large displacements in the model. And then we recommend what we have called a nonlinear study. It's like a, a more high-end type of analysis that can account for those things. But again, general engineering problems, this is a really great tool to be able to predict um, if you're basically most of the time if your stress is under yield stress, right, is what we're looking for. There's a handy plot for that. If you don't want to have to look up the yield stress and everything, then we can just do a factor of safety plot that I can manually define. Um, and then that will basically show me on the model any areas in this case where the factor of safety is below 10. So I can see my minimum factor of safety in, again, that area of the highest stress. I can see where that is and what this is, 2.39. So that's assuming that if I multiply the load by 2.3 times, then I'd get a failure, right? That's basically what it's saying there. Someone asked about the mesh size, the, the mesh size that we're using. I can go to the mesh details here and it will show me a maximum element size is 3.8 millimeter, minimum 1.2. It's all dependent on the geometry, um, and that's an exercise you could do. You could always try refining the mesh. Just go back in, you know, drag that slider a little bit to the right, 
or type in manually a smaller value or locally refine in certain areas where you want, then you could rerun the study and see if that changes your results very much. Right? It's very, very quick to just duplicate and rerun studies. If I want to try a study with a different setting, I can just right-click on the whole study. The study gets stored on this tab down here. And I can copy the study and call it um, static with higher load or something, right? whatever I want, or different material. That will create a copy of the study. So now I could change the load value or change the material or whatever I need. So if I want to change um, you know, this to a higher magnitude or a different direction or whatever it is, now I have a, a study that's run at that higher value. Okay. So you can store a reference of all these different kind of what-if changes you're making just on these different tabs down here. Also, if you want to change the geometry, since we're integrated into SolidWorks, I just click over to the Model tab, and I can do any geometry modification I want. Like if we had more factor safety than I needed, I can just come in here and make a change to one of these dimensions, rebuild the model, right? go back to my static study that I created, it will give me a little warning saying the mesh is out of date and the results are out of date. But I can just rerun it and it'll remesh with my same settings, rerun, resolve, and I'll get to basically almost instantly see the effect that the design changes had. So now I went from 2.2 factor safety to 2.0. Right. So you get really instantaneous feedback on these design changes once you have created the initial study. These factor of safety plots, there's another question coming in. They are basically defined as the uh, ratio to the yield stress by default for the material. So the stress, uh, the yield stress over the stress the material is actually experiencing. Because this linear static study, it only simulates up to yield, essentially. you It will predict stresses post-yield, but if you need accurate prediction up to the ultimate strength, then that would be another reason to go to the nonlinear study, which um, allows you to do what we call nonlinear material models, or like simulating post-yield behavior, essentially. Um, so we assume here in the linear static, it always bounces back after you remove the load. There's not going to be any permanent deformation in this, in this model. And that's another thing you'll see that you have stresses over yield if, if that gets calculated and then you can make the determination that, hmm, you know, this is something I should be running in a nonlinear study. But that's usually way outside the scope of most engineering problems. Mostly people want to keep their stresses below yield, and that's why this is such a popular module. Okay, there's also a number of built-in tutorials here. So if you just go to uh, simulation tutorials, just like you have SOLIDWORKS tutorials on the right-hand side of your screen, you also have them for simulation. So you can access tutorials on a lot of different load cases here. As you can see, any of these ones you click on will just guide you through step by step how to get started. It's really a really simple process. I mean, FEA is definitely a deep topic, but they've really made this tool in such a way that even if you've never touched analysis before, you'll be able to get up and running quickly. And that's basically the idea behind it is allowing you to quickly compare different designs. So I apologize if I get a little technical with things with the, some of the questions and things coming in, um, but it is really a very easy tool to use. And if you are concerned about the mathematical stuff behind the scenes, they have all kinds of validation PDFs and things here that you can, you can access theoretical manual and also verification problems. So these are pretty neat. These are like your uh, classical hand calculations that you might do. And they actually show you how to run through uh, the study in SOLIDWORKS and then compare that to the theoretical result. So they're little benchmarks essentially uh, in the form of tutorials that you can follow along with. And this is also a good way to make sure you're understanding the way things are set up correctly. Oh, we had a question on um, the mesh size versus part thickness. So that's actually a great segue into the next topic I want to talk about. Aside from there not being a hard limit on how large of an assembly you can analyze in here. You also get access to different meshing methods for different types of geometry. So if you happen to be working with a really thin piece of geometry, like a sheet metal part, 
SOLIDWORKS sheet metal parts actually automatically convert into what we call a shell mesh in simulation. So this is actually a sheet metal part I have here. And when I go over to my simulation study, this one I've already created, but you'll see it actually gets, um, it looks like it doesn't have any thickness to it. It actually gets automatically converted to what we call a shell mesh, which just happens to be better for these types of geometries where uh, they're really thin. So for thin, wide geometries, we have shell mesh support automatically built in. It's not something you need to worry about because if you're using the sheet metal tools, it automatically converts to that type of geometry. Or you can manually convert any geometry you want to a shell. Um, and then also for the more beam-like geometries, like if you're using the weldments tools for structural members, we have support for beam mesh in the static study as well. So this allows you to take something like this, like this little frame system, any of your structural frames or anything. You could run it with just the default mesh that we showed in the first example, called solid mesh. But anytime you create a frame, it automatically converts to beam elements. And you might have seen these before on um, the you know structural type analysis. They kind of look like little cardboard tubes. Uh, but these run very, very, very quickly for, for the beam type structures. And again, automatic conversion very little that you need to do. Um, so they give you all these simplification methods that you can use if you want to go to the more complex, larger assemblies. And that's actually something that we do cover in our training course. We have some great training content um, for more complex assemblies, essentially, in our, in our simulation class. We start simple, and then we go through setting up things like you see on the left, that pressure vessel, or this, this system here where you've got wide, thin parts and beams and all different things going on. So simulation can definitely handle that. Uh, when you get into the wide, thin things, typically we like to use those shells that I talked about. And again, for sheet metal, automatically converts. For weldments, automatically converts to beams. So that's another benefit of the integration, I guess, with SOLIDWORKS, because it's able to realize that intelligence from the sheet metal part and convert it to the right type of body for simulation. So again, SOLIDWORKS Premium gives you access to the static linear module. There is a whole slew of additional simulation that you can get access to in the add-on packages. There's modules for uh, that come in what we call simulation professional, adds some thermal capability, adds vibration and buckling prediction. It adds a true optimization tool. It's like you saw me jump back to the model, make a change, go back, run the simulation again. If you want to kind of automate that process, then you can do that with the autom optimization tool. You basically give it a target, and it reruns the study X number of times for you to achieve that target. And there's a lot more that gets added in, solid, in Simulation Professional as well. Um, and then a level called Simulation Premium, where you can get the nonlinear capabilities if you want to test past yield or large deformations. Uh, and you get dynamic capabilities if you want to do a shock test, okay, or something like that. So there are a lot of levels you can add on, but that that what you get in SOLIDWORKS Premium, the linear static capability is, is huge. And that's probably what, I would say 90% 90, 90 of the time, what people are using um, for these types of analyses. So I want to start to move on from SOLIDWORKS simulation and talk just quickly about SOLIDWORKS sustainability. This is an add-in you load up that allows you to do environmental impact analysis for your assemblies even. So, Basically, it looks at all the materials you have defined. Um, it has some values in it for what energy is required to you know, extract those materials from the earth and process them. Um, and then it asks you some questions about you know, how, the, how the parts are going to be assembled and where. Are they going to be painted or coated? It asks you a lot of these questions, and it comes up with a prediction of basically the environmental impact of your product. And then the neat thing about that is you can test different options and see that, okay, if we make it overseas and ship it by plane, or if we make it locally, maybe the you know there might be more or less energy consumption, more efficient or not. Um, you can actually compare what-if scenarios on environmental impact, if you're interested. So those four factors that it's going to output are the, basically the carbon footprint, the total energy consumed by the manufacturing process, um, air quality, and water consumption. So basically, in, in the software, it looks like this on the right, where you'll be 
putting in different factors, where it's manufactured, where it's used, assigning material definitions, um, any energy constants, again, will be input by default. You can override them if you want. And as you make comparative changes, you'll be able to get comparative impact on uh, if those design changes are helping or hurting your, your um, ecological impact. So pretty neat module for that. I mean, this is something a lot of companies are starting to pay more attention to, kind of green, green products, green development process and everything. So if you need any tools to help you visualize um, what your environmental impact is, this is a great one to be able to do that. And that kind of brings me to my last module I want to talk about, which is motion analysis, SOLIDWORKS motion analysis. So this also comes in the SOLIDWORKS Premium. This is one of the things we talked about in the beginning. You get access to what's called time-based motion analysis. And basically what this is, is it's not a stress analysis like SOLIDWORKS simulation was. It's the technical term for it is what you call rigid body kinematics. But basically, it's just a nice way of saying the, the individual parts don't deform. Okay. Whereas we saw in SOLIDWORKS simulation, we loaded that bracket and it was actually deforming. Here we make the assumption that the parts don't actually deform and most of the motion comes from them just moving. Right. So where you have linkages or mechanisms or power trains, um, anything like that, that's especially where SOLIDWORKS motion analysis can be very useful. And it runs right inside the SOLIDWORKS animator interface, if you've ever used that. It's a keyframe-based interface that pops up on the bottom of your screen at SOLIDWORKS. Um, one of the big differences with SOLIDWORKS motion is it actually does use your assembly mates. So you can use your existing assembly, apply some forces and motors to it, and then actually extract out engineering data. Right? You might have set up assemblies where you are able to move it around realistically, but if you've always wanted to be able to apply you know, a force on one end and see, okay, what's my mechanical advantage, or how fast is this thing going to accelerate, then those are the types of questions that motion analysis can answer for you. And you have all kinds of plotting tools and everything just like uh, you saw in SOLIDWORKS simulation. So we'll give a quick overview of the motion analysis here. Let's close down these couple other examples. And actually open up. these files. Now this one I will uh, load the separate add-on, SOLIDWORKS Motion, from my add-ons tree. That's key because without that you might see um, a motion study down here or some other type of study, but you only have access to what they call basic motion. So you get this even in SOLIDWORKS standard, basic motion, but basic motion is basically, I call it like video game physics. It's not, it will look like it lets you apply forces and loads and things, but it's not really um, intended for engineering purposes. It's not going to be very realistic. So what we want to do is load the SOLIDWORKS motion add-on and then we have access to what we call motion analysis which is our actually realistic method for um, predicting system performance and things like that. And basically our inputs in a, in a motion study are right here. We have motors, we can add springs, forces, dampers, um, we can add 3D contact between bodies. So if you don't want to define mates and you want things to just push off each other, bounce off each other, you can do that as well. I mean, you can simulate like a pool table, like right, right, like hit one ball into the other ball and see them bounce around. Those type of simple simple problems you can do easily in here with the contact um, or, or gravity accelerations. So basically the setup process for how I would set one of these up is defining, uh, say, a motor. So if this is a linear actuator on this medical lift chair here, then I would define a linear motor. I would choose where that's going to be defined from, and I could set, you know, whether there's all kinds of functions you can set for the speed, constant speed, or you can have an oscillating motor, or if you if you are one of the people that's in control systems or motion control, then you'll like some of these other options where you can actually input expressions, input. Um, data points or segments to control 
the motor and you'll actually get predictions here as you um, as you add in these different values you'll get predictions of like what the motion profile is going to look like so you'll get like acceleration velocity um, and even jerk prediction here so you can see what this motion profile looks like that I'm building and then I can run it within the program okay. but I would just set this to like an oscillation and I would set my distance whatever it's going to be in the, the amount of time I want it to take to oscillate back and forth uh, so that would be my motor I would go in and I would set a force or whatever I want to represent the weight of the patient I would set maybe a force acting downward in some location here um, on this on this piece okay, I could set the direction uh, where I want that force relative to to maybe based off a of plane okay, so there's a force acting downward right there and then you know a motor force I could turn on gravity other than that there's not really much else set up that I should need to do um, and then I should be able to click calculate and see this thing raise and lower and actually simulate through that range of motion. I've got one here. Should be all good to go. And this also lives on the SolidWorks assembly. So if I, again, I'll click to calculate right here. We'll see it actually lift up and come back down. One cycle. Okay. So it's basically, you might think, why, why is that any different than me just dragging dragging the assembly around? Because I could just go in, you know, and just, and just drag uh, if I if I floated the mates the, the appropriate mates or whatever that's holding it down, um, I would be able to just go in and just drag this thing up and down, right? And and that that would uh, that would get the motion, but it wouldn't actually simulate all the engineering properties that are going on, mechanical advantage and uh, power inputs required and things like that. So once we have an actual motion study solved, like I have here, now we can go into the reporting side of it. That's where really where the power is. So I can click this little button to generate a result plot. And say I want to track the displacement of the chair. right? I want to see how high it went up and back down. I can do a linear displacement plot in my Y direction. And I could choose you know, just a location on the chair. And click OK. Um, let's see. And we'll see how it travels up and down throughout the course of the analysis and anything I can even I can click anywhere on this plot and basically travel to that moment in time where that was occurring so I can see where the peak displacement is see where it is at halfway right see where it is at the end or if I play back the solution hopefully it comes across the webinar okay you'll see it actually um, step through that plot as well as I'm in there so this is showing me my my peak my basically my range of motion here I can get other useful things out of it because I have a motor defined there I can actually plot something like the force required by the motor so if you're designing one of these things you're probably trying to size the linear actuator or size the motor that's going to go in it so I can choose to plot motor force magnitude choose my linear motor and then now we can see the force that's required in newtons so peak force 7,000 newtons Right. Now there's also friction we can account for in the system, so we can actually add friction to any of these things. I don't know if that was enabled on this one. Um, if we look at any of the mates that were set up in here, uh, we can edit those and apply friction conditions to them. You'll have a special tab in your motion analysis, so right here an extra tab on your mates where you can define friction and set the friction properties. Um, or you can even define them as a bushing if you want them to be slightly flexible if there's actually like a rubber bushing in there or something in real life you can define them as a bushing and then put in some some stiffness to those different joints as well there's a lot of things like that that we can do to make the simulation more realistic uh, so we can get motor force we can get motor power if that's a concern right and go to power consumption of the motor see that over time 800 watts peak 859 watts so that could be another characteristic that you want to look at um, and you could make any changes you want to this linkage design I mean you could go back to the model tab change the model and just come back and rerun this motion study just like we did with the SOLIDWORKS simulation studies so a very straightforward way to uh, 
um, test out mechanisms and things. There's another type of output I really like here called a trace path, which is particularly useful for if you're looking to verify range of motion. Um, the trace path, wherever I click, it basically will show me the kind of swept path of that point through space. So I can actually see, if I play this back, I'll we'll actually see that that's, that's the exact path that that point travels through its range of motion. And you can do some really interesting things with those trace paths like mechanism synthesis or um, cam synthesis, if you're making a camshaft or anything like that. Those are actually lessons, uh, applications of motion that we cover in our training course as well. So there's a whole bunch of outputting options as we saw, um, displacement, forces, accelerations, all things related to that. If you are interested in the stress in any of these components, then there's actually workflows. Since SOLIDWORKS Premium includes both motion analysis and the SOLIDWORKS simulation analysis, you can actually do what's called a coupled study, where I could then take a component like this motor arm or whatever I'm interested in, and I could actually say, export the forces from the motion study over to the stress analysis, and then I can predict what the stresses would be in that component. So you can actually do a coupled simulation like that where we use motion to find the overall bulk forces in our mechanisms, and then we can choose any components we're worried about and actually run those through a SOLIDWORKS simulation study. So that's a pretty neat way to combine both tools together. And they make that, that process pretty streamlined and straightforward to do. Um, so just to show you some of the other things motion can do, I just have a couple of videos here, you know, more complex examples like controlling a full uh, six axis robot through its different operations here. Again, the thing to keep in mind is it's not just moving it, it's going to be able to extract forces at any of these joints through these whole you know, motion uh, paths that it's having to do. So here they just have it following like a sketched uh, path. Um, it's used in automobiles for predicting uh, suspension geometries and things like that, predicting performance of different iterations. Um, and again, robotics and a lot of applications. You can use it for very simple things or it can scale up to quite advanced motion control applications. But the most basic level, we're just taking any of your assemblies in SOLIDWORKS and allowing you to extract engineering data from them directly. Whereas I see a lot of our customers, they do, they put their whole assemblies together in SOLIDWORKS, but then they go to spreadsheets and hand calculations to try to predict, you know, uh, a lot of the performance of it. And I guess it's kind of the theme of these simulation tools I'm showing you today, is that it doesn't, doesn't always have to be that way anymore. It's still a great idea to confirm your calculations and do some hand calculations to back up, um, you know, what you see in SOLIDWORKS simulation or motion analysis, but um, now we have the capability to just run studies right on here and, and quickly iterate and test different things out. Last thing I want to mention, there is an alternate version of motion that comes in some of those higher level packages of simulation I mentioned. Um, so there's what's called event-based motion that comes in simulation professional or higher. And that's just a different way of interacting with motion. So um, where I was running time-based motion, that's basically <clears throat> where I have to place these little keyframes for every interaction that's gonna happen. So if I want the motor to turn on and off, for instance, I would have to place little keyframes in different places, telling it to turn on and off. And that's usually fine if I only have one motor but what if you have a system like a complex machine where there's dozens of motors, right? Then you would end up in a scenario where you, you, you think you have the timing right and then you start to run it and you find out the timings are off and you need to make an adjustment and you're basically trying to tune it inside the motion study. Well, that's where event-based motion can really help. Event-based motion allows you, rather than setting keyframes based on time, you can actually set up events and triggers. So you can basically set up like virtual sensors, like, okay, push the part until it hits this wall and then do this. And actually as an output, you'll get the times out of it. So you don't need to know what the times are going in 
you just set up the kind of the logic of it, the triggers that you want to be pushing. Basically, anything you might do with like a PLC controller in real life, a machine controller, you can program to a simple extent some of that logic into event-based motion and let it solve for the timings for you. Um, so that's the neat thing about event-based motion. Is basically, if you if you start off using time-based motion, you find that there's too many time-sequenced events, then you can set up some some logic in event-based motion to take care of that. And that comes with the higher level simulation studies. So all these things I mentioned, all these are basically upgrade paths. The um, you know if you start off with just the simulation in SolidWorks Premium, and then you decide you need a little more capability, it's a very simple upgrade path. Like all your studies, all your existing studies carry over. You just get these new capabilities added on. So there's not like any painful transition if down the line you do need more capability for some reason. Oh, good question again, asking about the motion features and just how to access them in SOLIDWORKS Premium. It's under the SOLIDWORKS Add-ins tab and uh, clicking that SOLIDWORKS Motion button, that will allow you to actually access SOLIDWORKS Motion when you have the study created. So down here on the bottom, you can right click and say create a new motion study. And then when you have that SOLIDWORKS Motion add-in pushed in and loaded, then you can choose motion analysis from this little pull down menu right here. And that's what enables the full advanced motion study. Otherwise, animation is just for making pretty stuff, just make the model spin around. Basic motion is kind of like a simulated like video game physics. And motion analysis is your full uh, kinematics software. So yeah, and if you don't have the SOLIDWORKS add-ins tab, then of course you just go through this little pull down arrow and go to your add-ins and that's where you can set either motion or simulation to load up uh, either the left side will load it for this instance or the right side will load it up every time you start SOLIDWORKS. So with that, that's basically the end of the core content I want to cover here. We looked at SOLIDWORKS simulation, we looked at sustainability very briefly and also the motion analysis. I just want to thank everybody again for attending. I also put down our technical support number down there. Uh, that's for Hawkridge Systems. You can go to support.hawkridgesys.com or you can call in to our technical support number if you're a customer of ours. And they can certainly help you out too if you're getting started with any of these things.